Hi, I'm Stefan Jones, and I'm the editor of the new Fishing Whales electronic magazine, which I'm sure you're all quite familiar with by now. Uh, to accompany one of the uh, first articles in this issue of, uh, of the electronic magazine regarding fishing for early season sea trout, I'm uh, doing, this, doing this video to highlight one of the, the patterns that serves me well at this time of year. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through it and actually tie you through it as it were. Uh, it's actually going to be a tube fly. So we're going to utilise uh, an aluminium slipstream tube. About the smallest I'd advocate using at, uh, at, at this time of year would be around an inch and a quarter. This one I'm actually using is an inch and three quarters. Uh, but you can use anything up to around two, two and a half inches long. So it's going to secure that in the vise. And then we're going to use some Uni Thread Fire Orange 6O tying silk. This is pre wax so it's going to get a, a, form a nice base onto the tube. We're not going to bother tying any body on, quite simply because it's a silver body already, as you can see. Uh, and it'd be Pretty foolish to put a, a silver body over a, an already silver body, uh, and also no tinsel, no tinsel you're going to put on is going to be as hardy as the the original uh, metal base anyway. So it'd be a bit of a waste of time actually, wasted exercise to actually put a silver body over a silver body. So we're going to start by putting a, a black Arctic fox wing onto the fly. So this is the the tail of the Arctic fox. Just going to. Choose a suitable area, that looks good. And always with Arctic Fox, choose a bit more than what you would normally for, for the likes of Squirrel or Buckter, quite simply because the fibres do collapse quite a bit when you get them wet. And always at the base of the Arctic Fox, you always get some waste fur, so just draw, draw that out. And then hold the base and do the same towards the end. You always have straggly bits towards the end, so hold the base quite loosely and then just draw the longer fibres out. A few more. There you go. So you should end up with a nice streamlined wing. You can see that looks pretty smack on to be honest. So remember the tube does protrude slightly into the vise here but also you, then you're going to have your hook sticking down here. So we want our wing to fall back just slightly beyond where the hook's going to go. So that looks perfect there. So we'll start off by offering that up to the tube and just securing it towards the head of the fly. There you go. That looks pretty ideal. So next, we're gonna snip the excess. So you don't need any of that back there. Just get every little nuisance piece out of there. There you go. So we're going to start off with some flash on top of that. So there are quite a few components to this fly, so you have to use everything quite sparingly, otherwise you'll find that you've got a, a very bulbous head up here. So you've only got a very short area to work in. So even though it's quite a simple fly, you have to watch how much material you do use, otherwise the fly will fail basically. It'll still catch fish, sure, but uh, we all fish with our eyes first, so it's, it better look good. Uh, so we're using some, uh, it's called Crinkle Mirror Flash, I believe. It's made by Vineyards. This is like the, the peacock or peacock and black version. It's really nice, but again, it's quite a strong material, so use quite sparingly. There's four there. I'm actually going to draw one of them out. Three should be ample. So just lay that over the arctic fox and make sure it kind of protrudes at least as long as your longest fibre in the arctic fox. Just offer that up to the centre and then pinch and loop onto the wing. There you go, perfect. You see that just flowing down on top. And then we're going to use some crystal hair. So some silver silver crystal hair. 
Again, three or four strands would be ample. You get four, three. There you go, perfect. Just snip that. Exactly the same as last time. I, I tend to use both uh, because they the the two act very differently in the water. So I find you get the best of both worlds by utilising both. But again, just sparingly. Just roll that slightly. There you go, perfect. So you can snip all this excess down here. Perfect. And then I'm going to, over the top of all this, I love peacock. Um, I utilise peacock in a lot of my sea trap flies. And I'm going to use these feathers right at the top of the peacock here, right at the top of the eye. Quite fine feathers and you know, they work brilliantly in the current. So you can use a fair bunch of them, probably about seven or eight fibres. Try and keep the, the natural curves, so bunch them together, you'll find they carry a natural curve. And just snip that at the base, holding, holding on quite firmly, just to keep that curve. There you go, so I've kept that curve. And just work with that curve and bring it right over the top of the fly. And then just pinch a loop again, just at the base. Just bind all that in securely. Perfect. Snip the excess. One final touch is we're going to utilize some teal right in the base of the fly just over this little section here it may seem like a unnecessary addition but i can assure you when you see it in the water it gives a, a great effect so we're just going to draw out the, the base of the teal pinch it together hold hold the base and then we've got a Again, you can see the natural curve of the feather there again. So just remember to utilize what nature has provided us with. Uh, let it protrude as long as the feather will go, probably about halfway down the length of the tube. And again, pinch and loop. There you go, perfect. Okay, so that's the top of the fly completed. Again you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five different components in the head, oh, sorry in the wing. So again just make sure you use everything sparingly. Now underneath again we can work with quite bright materials especially first thing in the season. So you can use this, it's um, a royal blue schlappen feather. Uh, and again take away the, the flue at the bottom. We just need these longer feathers that are down in the base so we just draw them out, hold on to the tips and then just draw them into a bunch. There you go, so there's one side. You can do the same on the other side. Hold on to the base. like that and you've got two sections which are going to marry the two up and that's going to form a false hackle. Now if you wanted to you could do a full hackle. Uh, I'd actually advocate carrying both because you'll get two very different profiles uh, from one, either, one with a false hackle or one with a full hackle. Uh, you get two very different fishing profiles. Uh, and two very different silhouettes, so I'd actually have kept carrying both. But this time, we're just going to do a a, a, a stripped or a um, a false hackle version. Just going to offer that up. Let it protrude about halfway down the tube again. Just pinch and loop as we were doing for the wing. Skewer it with a few tight turns. Perfect. Just going to snip the base. Good. 
get every little last section. There you go. So if you wanted to, the fly could be left like that, no problem at all. And you know, you don't really need to add anything else. But um, I must say, I've got a bit of a a soft spot for for jungle cock. I must say, there's just this little mid drift section here always seems a little bit barren until you add a a feather from a, a jungle cock into there. So I'm just going to select a, a couple of jungle cock feathers. See, just transforms the fly. So let's offer that up. Again, just pinch and loop. Snip the base. Get your other jungle cock feather. This is going to go on the other side. Just turn the vise, offer it up, exactly the same as we did last time. Pinch and loop. There you go. Just snip there. So that's the fly finish. So we've just got to tidy a few of these loose ends up basically. Just cover them up so we get a a build up of this fire orange thread which works very well on the fly it gives it a bit of a, a strike point so that's the fly finished so all we've got now is to do the whip finish tool job done pull that in nice and tight Snip that in there, and that's this fly finished. To give you a quick turn, you can see all riding down the middle of the fly there. You can see all the fine flashy materials. You can see that teal as well. You see that when all that gets wet, the teal gives a fantastic. Um, kind of bait fish effect towards the head of the fly but it looks really great so that's the end of the fly uh, you can fish that you know for, for your early season sea trout fishing it, it depends on the pool of course um, my go-to line especially for the early part of the season would certainly be an intermediate uh, and you know a, a fly like that on an intermediate line depending on the water height the depths of the pool but you know a, a pretty useful pattern I'd say as your go-to early season sea trout pattern so tie up a few tie them up in different sizes and tie them up in in different weights but um, it's certainly one I would recommend and uh, I hope it brings you luck good fishing to you